All right guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to be here with you guys because today we're talking all about carnivore and why I have restarted the carnivore diet as of one week ago. So I'm really excited to talk about what I'm doing differently this time, why I decided to go back on carnivore and so much more. We're gonna get into all of that on today's episode. So stay tuned. eight days ago, last Monday. Some of you may know I had been doing carnivore for a couple of years before that. I started keto back in 2015, and then about two years ago, I started doing carnivore, and then when it came to summertime, I started feeling like I was craving salads. I think I just wanted a change after doing keto and carnivore for so long, especially carnivore for a long time and I was just craving eating locally grown fresh salads and vegetables and just bringing in a little bit more variety into my plate. Now, I noticed some really interesting things during that time. I kind of took a hiatus or a break from the carnivore. It's kind of still keto, but I started adding in salads, vegetables, and carbs from yogurt and going up to anywhere from 50 to 70 grams of carb per day, still really prioritizing protein and making sure I was doing a lot of protein and working out. And I wanted to see if this was gonna change how I felt, if it was gonna change my results, and especially my workouts, because my goal right now is really to build muscle. That's what I've been focusing on for the past, I would say eight months or so. Um, it's just building muscle and really optimizing my body recomposition as I continue to do that. So I did enjoy having the salads, having the veggies, bringing those back in, but I started to notice some things I didn't like as much. The main thing was really bloating and a lack of satiety. So in bringing in more salads, I had was enjoying the variety of having vegetables with my meals, but I found that I wasn't getting much satiety from a small amount of salad or vegetables, so I'd end up eating a lot of it and I would really end up bloated all the time. And when I started carnivore again on Monday, I remembered why I loved carnivore when I first started it is the instant satiety. I can eat much smaller volumes of food because the food is so nutrient dense and get satiety much quicker. And it's just a lot easier to do. There's so much less prep that goes into it. Um, I did find it worthwhile to do that, but I found myself spending a lot of time like chopping and making salads and preparing vegetables and it just added more time into meal prep. With carnivore, I remember how easy my meal prep is. My meal prep basically consists of putting a ton of ground beef into a bowl, mixing it together with some beef liver and frying up beef patties and then when it's time for my lunch I just take some of those beef patties that are cooked about 80% and I heat them up and they're ready in like two minutes <laughs> and then I have a few burger patties either with three eggs or I have three burger patties and some egg pudding and I am completely satisfied I don't think about food again for several hours five to six hours until it's dinner time and I just find this really, really easy and I have no bloating whatsoever and it's really, really nice. Another benefit of going back on carnivore and being zero carb is you lose all that extra water that you retain when you're eating carbs. So you do notice weight loss, most of it's water, but I like the feeling of being leaner and not holding water as much. And it's really the simplicity of being able to get my nutrient needs met in you know my meal and then just moving on and having minimal cleanup, minimal meal prep, it really suits my lifestyle. So I wanna talk about 
I think the main mistake that I made last time when I was doing carnivore is I was really just eating meat. <laughs> I was mostly eating meat. That's what I thought of when I thought about carnivore. I was like, you just eat lots of steak and ground beef, right? So I really just ate a lot of meat and it ended up being that I didn't eat enough calories and I really got too thin. And I don't want to experience that again because I didn't like the way that I looked or that my body looked when I became so thin. But I am keeping in a couple of things. Um, I am allowing myself to have a little bit of sweetener in my egg pudding. I am adding more fats in deliberately. So I didn't really know how important it was to stay with ketogenic macros. I'm doing carnivore with modified keto, so I'm doing higher protein, but if you are not eating any carbs, you really have to add in more calories from fats if you want to feel good on carnivore and not lose too much weight like I did. So, you know, if your goal is to lose weight, it's very effective in that if all you eat is meat. But for me, I know that I need to keep my fats up higher to make sure that my hormones are functioning properly. I don't go too low in fats and I make sure that I feel great and I'm well fueled. So this time, because I've been reverse dieting up to 2200 calories now, I have been learning to do that with fat. So I've been adding in lots and lots of egg pudding with the egg yolks, which is one of my favorite fats. I have it with heavy whipping cream. I make sure to add lots of butter, extra butter, to my steak, to my meals, to ground beef. And I am adding in more butter than I used to and when I make my turkey liver pate. I'm just adding it in not to be ketogenic because that's a myth. You don't need fat to be ketogenic. You do need fat to maintain your calories so they don't get too low and your metabolic rate slows. And that happened to me. My met metabolism slowed when I went too low in calories from not eating enough fat. So if you think that the answer to weight loss is just not eating any fat, it's a big mistake because if all you eat is protein, your metabolic rate is going to slow down. If you cut your calories by too much, your metabolic rate will slow down and you will regain the weight that you've lost when you go back higher in calories unless you eat at that lower caloric level for the rest of your life. So. It's something really important is not reducing your calories by too much and chasing those like really rapid results. Give yourself time and have a long-term approach. I have a long-term approach with my health. I want to build muscle. I know it's going to take me a few years to build up the muscle that I want to, but I'm okay with that. I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna do it lovingly with my body and make sure that I'm well fueled in the process. So I'm really going through a season right now of muscle building and improvement season, and I want to gain muscle for my future, future me, and I need to be well fueled to do that. So I'm adding in daily egg pudding. I usually have egg pudding with my lunch and with my dinner, and I do it mostly with egg yolks to make sure that my ratio of fat to protein is balanced. So I do about one gram of protein and one gram of fat, about the same. And I make sure that I have the egg pudding in there just with the yolks because it is higher fats, whereas if I use whole eggs, it's gonna be more protein. And I have a lot of protein coming from the burgers and steak that I eat. And then at dinner, whether I'm having steak or ribs or another kind of fatty beef, I like to have beef sausages too. I like to have egg pudding with that as a dessert and put heavy whipping cream on it. Another food I've been adding in is waffles and I make those also with eggs and heavy whipping cream or butter. So those are ways that I have been incorporating more fats. I would like to add in more beef tallow, more suet on its own and add that in. I just haven't properly found the right source of it yet and I will add it in. I know that that's something I wanna try doing more of, but right now I really like butter and heavy whipping cream. They're kind of different textures, especially the heavy whipping cream. It's a nice airy, light texture and it's kind of different than just eating 
you know, the meat fats all the time. So beef, tallow, and suet does have stearic acid in it, and it's great for that, but dairy fat also does have stearic acid in it, which is great for helping the body to burn its own fat. I'm approaching this with the goal of being in ketogenesis. I can already feel a huge difference just in these eight days from cutting my carbs back down to zero, doing zero carb. There are some carbs that you still get that are trace in eggs, trace glycogen in liver and that kind of thing, but they are trace and you're generally going to be under 10 grams of carb per day, usually five to six grams is what I see from the eggs and liver glycogen in the day. So it is pretty much zero carbs. I am moderating fat and protein so that I get into ketosis. Now I mentioned you don't need to eat fat to be in ketogenesis. The main determinant whether or not you're in ketosis is your carbohydrate intake. And second to that is your protein intake. Your fat intake doesn't matter because if you have stored fat on your body, your body can utilize that to make ketones. If you don't have stored fat, or in the case of say a child who is not overweight, they don't have a lot of body fat, then adding the fat in does make it a ketogenic diet. But the two primary determinants of the process of ketogenesis in the body are carbohydrates and protein. So, your carbs, if you get those as low as possible, you are eating some carb to be at 20 grams total carb per day is gonna be optimal. With the protein, it depends on your activity level. So because I do a lot of resistance training, I do a modified ketogenic diet with higher protein. Over time, as your body adapts to ketones and being fat adapted, your organs and tissues, they start being fueled more and more from fat itself. Your other tissues initially will use ketones, but then it ends up being mostly your brain that is using the ketones. So that's why ketones also level off is because your body first makes them for a lot of different tissues, but your muscle tissue, your heart, so many different organs in the body can just oxidize fat really easily. It can go through cell membranes really easily because cell membranes are made from fatty acids, from cholesterol, so they can cross crosses barriers really easily and the body can just use fats directly for fuel but your brain because of the blood brain barrier it needs these tiny pieces of fat and that's what ketones are so your liver chops up the fat or the fatty acids into ketones and it makes these tiny little pieces of fat which are about four to five calories each per ketone that can cross the blood brain barrier and provide this alternate to glucose so that you don't just have to be making tons of glucose from gluconeogenesis. So that process is happening all the time. It's not a bad process by any means. It happens all the time and you need glucogenesis to happen in order to get into ketogenesis. So never think of gluconeogenesis as a bad thing. Your body cannot actually get into ketosis unless you go into gluconeogenesis because once you cut off the carbs, your body then has to make glucose from the protein that you eat or it's going to take it from your structural skeletal muscle protein and amino acids and we don't want that. So it's going to make glucose from the protein that you eat, from those amino acids. It's going to make glucose from the fatty acids in the food that you eat and the foods and the food stored on your body, the fat stored on your body. And it can also make it from pruvate and lactate. It's going to use these other substrates to make glucose, but it's gonna need less and less of them. As your body starts getting into ketosis, you're gonna make ketones, and then you're not gonna need as much gluconeogenesis. But there's always gonna be gluconeogenesis occurring, even if you're not on keto. So it's not a bad word. Don't fear gluconeogenesis and know that your body goes through all these wonderful, amazing adaptations. So that's what I'm doing so far. I'm feeling great. I just love the simplicity of carnivore and I know that this time I'm really doing it properly by making sure that I get enough fat in my diet and maintaining this level that I've worked up to to about 2200 calories now I'm going to maintain that so I'll keep sharing as I find and experiment with different kinds of fats once I find a good source of beef tallow and suet I'll try rendering some of that out and I want to try uh, tallow or suet ice cream that I see my friend Sarah Carnivore Yogi posting about and 
making that with some egg yolk. That's kind of what I'm doing right now. I wanted to give you guys a bit of an update and let me know what you guys are doing right now. Are you doing keto? Are you doing carnival? Um, what kinds of things have you been experimenting with? Let me know. I would love to hear from you guys in the comments below and excited to keep seeing where this goes. But I am continuing to keep my protein intake at the same level, as high as it was. And for me, I'm able to get into ketosis and I am testing it at that level. But if I need to, I will moderate it down lower because as you get into ketosis, you don't need as much dietary protein because ketogenesis is muscle sparing. So that's one of the great things about these amazing molecules that we know of as ketones. And it's one of the reasons I love keto so much. So thank you guys for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'm excited to keep sharing updates with you guys as I go along. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. And be sure to hit the like button on your way out and subscribe so you get notifications when I put out new videos like this one. All right, guys, wishing you a fat-filled rest of your day. Sending you all so much love. And thanks for watching. Bye for now. Right, so I've got the beef short ribs here and I've got two pounds. Each one of these is one pound and you can see they're pretty thick short rib style and I'm gonna put them in the slow cooker on the higher setting for about five to six hours. All right, so I've got the short ribs in the slow cooker here and I just put them in without any water or anything just right into the slow cooker and it's going to create a condensation reaction and break the meat down so I like to put seasoning and anything else at the end because if I put salt now it'll draw water out of the meat so it should be ready in about five to six hours. All right, let's check in here. You can see the beef ribs have been cooking really nicely in there and the fat and the meat juices are bubbling up underneath. So those are gonna be perfect and delicious. It only takes five to six hours. All right, I'm gonna take them out now. They are all nice and done. And that meat is just gonna fall right off the bone. It's so, so tender. It's amazing, you really don't need anything in there. Just like with the beef cheeks, just the meat. And it makes such succulent ribs. Alright, you've got the ribs there. Ribs are ready to serve and enjoy.